All right, folks, we're gonna go ahead and get started. At the beginning, let's take a, a quick look at what we talked about yesterday on the joiner. There's a few things that you need to remember about the joiner, okay? First of all, it's the first machine you're gonna use when you're prepping a board for use in a piece of furniture. Its main purpose is to flatten, straighten, and square the surface of a board, whether that be the face or the edge. Okay, so you guys in the beginning, flattening, straightening, and squaring the edge of the board is its sole purpose as far as you're concerned in beginning woods. Okay, we do not put sheet goods to the joiner. Okay, only solid stock, poplar, pine, alder, cherry, maple, oak. We don't put plywoods and things like that to the joiner. There's no reason to. Next, minimum length you can run through the joiner. Is 12 inches. Okay, 12 inch minimum length. You must always use push pads when running the joiner, whether you're fa uh, facing a board or joining the edge of a board. You have to use push pads. We want to keep your hands away from that cutter head. Okay, the guard must always be in place. Hold on, I got two more people coming in. Okay. All right, and no baggy clothes. We don't wear gloves in the wood shop. No baggy clothes, no baggy jackets, sleeves, things like that. One of the reasons I'm telling you this stuff is let me share something with, let me share my screen here real quick. Okay, so this is week three right here. Okay, this is a video, I forgot to rename it, but this is a video of yesterday's lecture. All right. And on today, Tuesday, we have a quiz that you're going to take at the end of class on the joiner. It's a little five question quiz. Okay. So um, we'll go over the joiner things again real quick at the end here. Um, and then tomorrow at the end of class, we'll review what we go over today. And then we'll take a table saw quiz. Okay, real quick and easy. It's just a little online quiz. It scores it as you go. All right. So I'm going to stop this share real quick and make sure I don't have anybody waiting to get in. All right. So let's introduce you guys to the table saw. Okay. The table saw's main function, the thing you're going to use it for more than anything else, is to rip lumber to final accurate width. When I say final accurate width, I'm talking about ripping a board in this direction, okay? Now, parts of a table saw, okay? I need a pointer, let me get a stick. Okay. All right, so this right here, this is called the rip fence, all right? That's what we use for ripping the width. You can unlock the fence, slide it closer, further away from the blade, lock it back down, okay? There is a gauge right here, or a tape embedded in this rail. There's another one right here on a cyclops that tells you, for example, if I wanna set it to 10 inches, I look from above, I get that sight glass line lined up on 10 inches and lock it, okay? There are some adjustments on the machine. For example, this pan wheel right here, if you watch the blade, it raises and lowers the blade, okay? And it can also be locked. So if you're ever trying to move this table saw blade up or down, and it doesn't want to go, it's probably just locked. There's another hand wheel over here on the far side. That's for changing the angle of the blade, all right? This red doohickey right here, right in the middle, Okay, this is called a throat plate. Okay, that's the throat that the blade's sitting down in. Let's raise this up so you can see it. All right. This is a 10 inch cabinet saw. So that's a 10 inch diameter blade. It's a five and a quarter horsepower saw. And really the only thing that means to you guys is that um, if a board were to kick back out of this machine, it's gonna kick back really fast. Okay, 60, 70 miles an hour is gonna come out the back. It can but we have safety measures in place that keep that from happening, all right? 
one of the most important safety measures we have on this machine right here is what's called a riving knife, okay? This little guy right here. It's a riving knife, okay? And I'll show you what that does for you in a little bit. Normally, in beginning woods, you guys would be required to run this machine with the overhead guard in place, right? And the overhead guard basically has a riving knife built into it. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's the same shape right here. So this acts as a splitter or a riving knife. We've also got these little spring-loaded anti-kickback balls here and here. They're supposed to keep a board from coming back at you, all right? In beginning woods, you guys can only run this machine with this overhead guard in place, all right? What that does, it adds a little extra safety measure on top of just using a riving knife, okay? All right, so we're gonna leave this off so you guys can see what's happening first. Okay. Now there are a million different things that we should cover on the table saw, but the bottom line here is this quarter, you guys aren't here running it. So until you actually get into the shop, we're going to forego some of the basics of the table saw and just try and hit the high points if I can remember them all. All right. All right. Let's start with just basic setup of the machine when you're ready to cut, okay? We'll take our board that we're gonna rip. We're gonna set it next to the blade, all right? Let me bring this down a little bit. And, okay. Blade height, first of all. We never wanna have this much of the blade exposed when making a cut. Now, if you look, there's these little guys in between the teeth right here. These are called gullets, okay, this gap in between the teeth. Basically, what we want to do is have the blade about a quarter of an inch above your material. And the way we do it in here, we set it so the gullet is at about the top surface of the wood. That's probably a little more than a quarter inch, but that's just how we do it. Try and remember. Yeah, it's about three eighths, okay? So that's our blade height, approximately one quarter inch above the material, okay? One of the things we wanna make absolutely sure of on this machine in particular and the dado saw as well, these are what's known as saw stop table saws, okay? And what that means, it's a brand name, but it has technology built into it that if any part of your body were to come into contact with the blade when it's moving, okay, the machine will instantly shut down, all right? Um, I got somebody just coming in. I think it was AJ. Let me try and get it. I wish you guys would get here on time. Actually, AJ's already here. It would help a lot. Ray. Sorry, it was in my shop. Okay. Well, you need to be here on time, bud. Okay. okay. All right. So saw stop is a brand of table saw that has a safety system built into it. If you come in contact with it when the blade's running, um, I don't know if we can see this, but let me zoom back out. And no, you can't. But uh, anyway, it's, it's just another safety feature that we have. In other words, we do not want to touch this blade at any point in time, especially when it's running or even running down, shutting down. Um, let's see here. Minimum 12 inch length on the table saw. You can't rip anything that's less than 12 inches long. So if you've got a board that's eight inches long, you're not ripping it to width on this machine. If the fence on this machine is set at four inches or closer to the blade, you have to use a push stick, okay? Now, you can use a push stick if the fence is further away, that's fine. You can use push pads wherever you like. But if it's at four inches or closer to the blade, you have to use a push stick. We keep one right here, okay? Um, a couple things, other things about the table saw. 
Um, these two grooves in the top surface of the table saw are called miter slots, okay? And they will take a miter gauge that will allow you to do cross cuts, okay? What we've effectively done when, when we put this miter gauge in here, we've added a secondary fence, basically, that's perpendicular to the main rip fence, okay? Anytime you walk up to our machines in this shop, Okay, I don't care what it is. Let me show you with a different miter gauge. So you can get a little better idea with this miter gauge of what we mean by adding a secondary fence. That's this long surface on the miter gauge. It's a fence, okay? Any machine we have in this shop, whether it's the dado saw, the table saw, the miter saw, the panel saw, the jointer, all these machines that have fences, okay the long edge of the board must be against the fence every time okay we have no exceptions to that rule so in other words this would be placing our long edge against the fence that would allow us to make a cross cut right that's a rip cut that's a cross cut okay if we want to make a cross cut for some reason on the table saw, we've got to add this other fence. In other words, we can't put the board like this, okay? We can't put the short edge against the fence. When we're using the rip fence, it's always going to be the long edge against the fence every single time. If you do this on the table saw, you're asking for trouble. That's a kickback situation waiting to happen, okay? Besides, that's not the definition of a rip cut. That's the defini definition of a cross cut, is cutting board this way, across its width, altering the overall length of a board. That's a cross cut. We do that at the miter saw, okay? We generally don't do it here, okay? This is the definition of a rip cut, cutting a board along its length and altering the overall width of the board, okay? So, that's the basic safety stuff. 12 inches long, closer than four inches to the fence, to the fence to the blade, you have to use a push stick, um, no baggy clothes. We always want to stand to the left of the blade, all right? If I'm standing right here, I'm in the path of kickback, okay? Imagine what that would feel like if that board flew off there at 50, 60 miles an hour. So we stand to the left of the blade here, okay? I'm gonna move this camera so you guys can see this from a different view. All right, I have to physically move it. And I want you to see this from the front. Let's see if we can do this without too much trouble. All right, so here we go. All right, I'm gonna back this up. Okay, there was no other way to do that and have this thing in the right position. Okay, so I'm gonna get this thing where we want it. All right, here we go. Okay, so ripping a board to width. All right, a couple things. Does anybody remember what machine? we have to use prior to coming to the table saw to get this board ready for ripping. There's a machine we have to go to, okay, and prepare this board for coming to the table saw. Does anybody remember what it is? It's part of our order of operations, thickness, width, length. Planer? Close, but no. Very, at least you're trying. Carter, you nailed it, it's the jointer. All right, we have to have a nice, flat, straight, square edge to put against the fence in the table saw, okay? We cannot do this without that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right, so one of the things I teach my students to do when they're getting ready to rip a board or multiple boards is to joint one edge of all their boards. Let me mark these so you can see it. 
okay? And then I generally tell students to lay your boards to the right of the fence with all the jointed edges to the right, okay? That way, when you're over here ready to start ripping, you don't have to fumble around and wonder which edge is the proper edge to put against the fence. All you have to do is pick it up, there's your jointed edge, it's ready to go, okay? So, on this machine, a couple other safety features about it that I want you guys to pay attention to. Make sure nobody's standing behind you. Make sure there's no foreign materials or objects or junk like that in the boards. Um, metal staples that they use to attach barcodes and things like that with, um, for whatever reason, um, can trip this saw stop device. That's about a $65 charge for the cartridge. Which this is a cartridge from the dado saw that got tripped. Okay, so this is one of the things that has to be replaced, right? A little over the computer chip in there and a sensor and everything like that. This aluminum block is what jumps up and stops the blade and everything drops below the surface of the, of the, of the table. Kind of like the charge in an airbag in a car, okay? Just a small little explosion, boom, shoots that aluminum block up and stops it. Okay, I'll, I'll show you a, a video of that happening. Um, we've got one somewhere around here. Um, yeah, so actually what they're doing nowadays with the prevalence of these machines, these saw stop machines, they started using plastic staples to attach barcodes and tracking info and stuff like that. So that helps. We found, we found bullets embedded in here. Somebody's out in the woods plinking a 22 or a rifle at a tree or something like that. Lead goes into the tree, tree gets cut down, cut into lumber. Now you've got a bullet embedded in it. They've got little wands that you can use to wave over certain lumbers to see if there's any metals embedded in it, okay? So no foreign objects in your wood, in your, in your pieces. Um, you need a jointed edge, minimum 12 inches long, blah, 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 all that stuff. The last thing I'd tell you that you need to make sure and do if you're coming up here to the table saw is grab your set of plans because you will have a set of plans and open it up what we call the cut list, okay? So this is a cut list. See if you guys can see this. It's basically, is that too close? It's all fuzzy, it looks all fuzzy. Basically a cut list is nothing more than, oh, come on, focus. Seriously? There we go. A list of every single piece and part it takes to make a project, okay? It's got the thickness, the width, and the length. And oddly enough, whether you want to believe it or not, but when we look at this, and I'll show you guys this in more detail at some point, okay, they always list the thickness first, then the width, then the length. That happens to be the same as our order of operations, okay? Anyway, the reason you need this, because you're gonna set it right here, your parts will be labeled as to what they are, okay? So all you have to do, if this is part A, right? Before you set the fence, you look over here, part A is four and a half inches wide. Okay, so you can set your fence four and a half inches wide. Lock it down. Nobody's standing behind you. Okay, you've got your jointed edge right here facing the fence. All right, we never start the machine with our hands on the board. I've seen this happen several times. All right, students will put their hand on the board. They'll come down here, they'll lean down to try and figure out where the on switch is and, and they'll slide the board right up against the end of the blade. As soon as they turn it on, it kicks it out from under a hand and shoots it out the back. So hands off the board when you start the machine. All right, it's a pull switch, it's a very large switch. And if you're standing in the proper place where you're told to stand, all right, then all it takes is a simple movement of the leg and bump the switch with your knee. There's a reason for that. Okay, for example, if I'm in the middle of a rip. And something starts to go wrong. I don't have to take my hands off the board or anything. All I have to do is bump my knee into the switch, maintain control of the board without taking my hand off and I can shut the machine down. Okay, so a couple other things. All right, 
where your hands go and what your eyes are doing this whole time, okay? Your right hand supporting the back of the board like this, not overhand like this. There's a reason for it. You've got a larger board, you can easily hold a board, well, I shouldn't say easily, but you can hold a board much easier this way when it's larger than you can this way. If you don't believe me, try picking up a book or something at home, a heavy textbook or something like that, and hold it like this with your palm up, and then try holding it like that with your palm down, okay? The next reason for that is a lot of times when you're running a board like this, you want it flat on the table. You don't want it nose up and you don't want it tail up, okay? It's a lot harder to control that with your hand like this. Generally, you tend to run the board through nose up if your hand is palm down, okay? So we don't wanna do that, all right? So your right hand's job is simply to support the back of the board and feed it into the blade, all right? Once you get about here, right? My hand can't fit there, it hits the edge of the table. So I have my left hand here, I just flip my hand over, hook my thumb over the back, push it the rest of the way through. My left hand's job is really, really, really important. The last thing we wanna have happen is as you're pushing a board through, is to have the board come away from the fence. That's a really bad situation. Not only that, but it produces a terrible, useless cut. So your left hand is going to keep the board tight against the fence the entire time. Now you can let that slide along your fingers but nine times out of 10, you're gonna get splinters. So I tend to walk the board like that, all right? The trick is not to let your hand go past the front of the blade plate, the throat plate, all right? So it's like this. Okay, we start the board in, our left hand's keeping it tight against the fence. My eyes are here, not there, okay? My eyes, if anything's gonna start to go wrong, it's gonna start to go wrong here at the fence before anything else. So I start feeding my board in. I hook my thumb. Now I can take my hand away. Push it through and off the table. Never, ever, ever on any machine in here try to remove a piece of scrap material until the blade has come to a complete stop, all right? Always make sure the blade's at a complete stop before you try to remove any scrap material. Okay. Uh, wouldn't you be looking over the fence to make sure your board stays against it? Let me see what you guys are saying here. I got some questions I want to try and address here and answer. Um, yeah, that would hurt, Ty. No doubt about it. And if you think about it, for most people, it's probably not going to hit you in your chest. Um, yeah, it hurt. Blah, 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 blah. You guys, um, if I see any more um, comments on here that directly go at somebody else, I will ban you from this, okay? You'll take a fail and you'll be gone. So um, if you can't be nice to each other, don't say anything, all right? Um, I'm not going to put up with that stuff. So yes, the on switch is a giant red paddle. Um, I'll show you guys that at some point here. Yeah, you're, you wanna keep your eyes on the fence, okay? Not on the blade. Um, you guys wanna be able to see the blade when the overhead guard is in place. So the, the area that's gonna start to cause the issues when ripping on the table saw is the contact point between the edge of the blade or edge of the board and the fence. And we wanna keep it tight against the fence the whole time. So that's where you're gonna focus and keep your eyes on, all right? Um, but, it's just, just because the blade is already embedded in the board, it can still move away, all right? And let me, sh let me see if I can show you guys that. Ty has a good point. Um, why is it called ripping? That's a really good question. I don't know where that term came from. Um, I mean, crosscut kind of makes sense, but a rip, who knows? I mean, why do they call it a dado or a rabbit? That's a good question. I've never actually looked into that, but I don't know. But the, the point Ty's trying to make here about once it's already in the blade, you don't really need to worry about that because the fence won't move if you did it properly. It's not the fence we're worried about moving. Let me zoom in on this. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, and I'm going to move over just a little bit. 
and down. All right, so here's what we're talking about. I don't know if we'll be able to see this, but let's try. So it's not so much, even once you're in, and I can't really see it because it's not zoomed in enough. Let me get this camera on here a little better so you can see this. Maybe. All right, let's see if I can fix this. He's, he's got a good point, and I want to I make sure you guys understand what he's talking about here. All right. All right, we'll zoom in. So what we're talking about here, the way things can go wrong really fast, all right, So right now, we're pretty much completely inside the blade, right? The, bl the back of the blade's right here, the frontal blade's right here. So the board's completely buried in the blade if we're making a cut, all right? So here's the problem. If you're not paying attention, you're not trying to keep this board tight to the fence. Can you guys see? I don't even see or not. Can you see this little gap right here that's starting to form as I come through? It's, it's getting wider and wider as I come through the blade. That's where we have problems. I'm still in contact here at the back, okay? But it's not about the fence moving, it's about the board moving. There's movement in there, all right? Um, the reason this is bad is because the back of the blade is actually moving up out of the table the front of the blade is moving down into the table. So if we didn't have a riving knife on here, let's take it off for a second. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if that riving knife wasn't there, this is what it's doing for us. If we start to move away from the fence and this blade is moving up at the back, what it can do is grab that board. It can grab the edge of the board right here and pick it up and throw it at you. So it's just, you have to keep it tight against the fence. Keep your eyes on the blade or on the, on the fence, not the blade. And I wish you guys were here. It'd be a heck of a lot easier to show you this. Um, so we've got a little bit of time and I'm not sure why it's called ripping though. I wish I did. No. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I showed you guys that kickback video where that goober go, uh, intentionally creates a kickback situation and shoots a board out the back. Did I show you guys that? I did. Okay. So that's what happened. The board starts to move away from the fence out here. There was no riving knife there. And so these, these teeth that are coming up out of the back, coming up out of the table in the back is what grabs the board and throws it out the back. In fact, I can show you something here. Let me go up a little bit. And this is what we call our wall of shame. And it's not too big, so you should be able to see it. There's your handsome instructor. If you wanna. All right, here it is right here. So this is our wall of shame right here. We've got some things that are screwed to the wall here, okay? So this first one down at the bottom is somebody messing with the planer. Um, they tried to take too much material off at one time. The same thing with this one right here, a gentleman by the name of Leffel. But when you move up, these two boards right here, these boards were kicked back, okay? And there's multiple reasons for that. But probably the biggest reason is, for one, they're too short. Neither one of those boards are 12 inches long, okay? And you can see this little curved cut in here and a slightly curved cut this is the bottom surface of the board that you're looking at, okay? And that curved cut is where I'll show you here. I'll go back. That curved cut on the bottom surface of the board, yeah, that's the right way, there's my head. And I'll show you how that happens or at least kind of explain it to you, try to explain it to you. And we'll zoom in on it, okay? All right, so how that happens, if there's no riving knife in here, 
Some people call it a splitter as well. Um, doesn't really matter what you call it. But if you have a small board that you're trying to get through, all right, and it does this number, moves away, this is gonna grab it. And as it grabs it coming up out of the back, it spins this board out the back. That's what tends to put that little curved mark on, on the underside of the board. I've seen it where it looks almost straight, but usually there's some sort of a curve that indicated that it came off like that and got shot out the back, okay? So that's table saw. Um, I want you guys to take a minute. We've got about 10 minutes in class left, I think. Um, I want you guys to take a minute here and I want to show you the quiz and where, where it is because you guys need to take this joiner quiz. Okay, um, real quick. I've already taken it. I took the one naming the machinery and the joiner quiz. Okay, so you've already taken it, that's fine. Um, but let me, let me, here's where the quiz is. Okay, and it'll look a little different from you guys probably. It won't be a preview, it'll be take the quiz. But remember, the joiner, minimum 12 inch length. Okay, no baggy clothes or gloves. Um, what were some of the other questions? Oh, purpose is to flatten, straighten, and square the edge of a board. Um, let me see what the other question was. There was a couple others. Um, so that you guys don't have any trouble with it. So minimum length. Um, you always have to use push pads. We don't run sheet goods on the joiner and no baggy clothes. And the purpose is to flatten, straighten, and square the edge of a board. So if you guys would, please go ahead and take that quiz while you're here. Um, that way I know you're here at the end of class. Um, if you don't take it now, then I'm gonna figure that you were probably just logged on and took off um, and left your computer on for a while. Four, no, 12 inch minimum length on the joiner. Four inches, Dakota, is for, is if the fence on the table saw is set to within four inches or closer to the blade, you must use a push stick. For the joiner, it's just the minimum length on the joiner is 12 inches, okay? Hopefully that helps a little bit. All right, so you guys, if you have questions, ask questions. I'm fine with you asking questions. Go ahead and take that quiz and we'll get ready to get out of here.